and what's up to you all, Matriculants? Welcome to Learn Extra Live with me, Abram and Tracy. Hello, Abby. How are How you? I'm good in yourself. Good, thank you. How was your day? Long. Very long. But it's fun. I'm here now, so it's good. It's awesome. good. Awesome. Yes. I come here to hear also the mindset is how was your day at school and what did you do in class? Share with us. Maybe Tracy would be doing the same thing that you guys did, so you have to share with us. But what are we doing? Today we're going to do organic chemistry. Um, we start in organic, and I'm really hoping that your teachers are a little bit ahead of where we are. <laughs> because we've only just started organic at my school. So um, we're just doing the basics. We're going to look at organic molecules, a little bit of naming, some of the rules. Yeah, so it's part one of three parts. All right, and, and, three weeks. and in case they are ahead, Mindset is help one another on facebook.com forward slash Lenextra. And if you're struggling still, post your questions. We'll tackle them later on the show. Tweet us your comments and your questions at Lenextra. And lastly, download your notes for free. Mahala at len.mindset.co.za. Interestingly, in your notes, you'll find the test yourself questions. It's just multiple questions. You should take those questions answer them, and then post the answers on the form that is given. The link is already on Facebook, so do check it out because you could stand a chance of winning an, an awesome Etam voucher, probably sponsored by Vodacom, worth 110 rands. Oh, I so wish I was a student some days. Really? Yeah, because I'm not allowed to answer these things. Who would you call if you could get this Etam, Tracy? Who would I call? Yes. My best friend. All right. You know, old, old Zappi and... Well, you know. let me <laughs> tell you, we have a winner from uh, last night's show, and the winner is, drum roll please. D yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's uh, Morongwa Khatle. Morongwa Khatle. Congratulations to you. You've won yourself a wo an airtime worth 110 rand to call all the other mindsetters and to share. Tell them about mindset. Tell them to like our Facebook page and know that we are here to help you learn more and learn extra. Thank you so much, Tracy. Oh, thank you. So can I get yes. on with it now? Oh, brilliant. Thank you, AB. Okay, so... Guys, what are we looking at? We're looking at organic molecules. Now, the thing about organic molecules is if you learn the rules and you learn the trends and you learn the, the way things are done, then I can ask you anything, okay? There are millions and millions and millions and millions, maybe not that many, but there's millions of organic compounds. So there's not a chance we can make you learn every single name, every single compound. So we're going to teach you how to recognize them. And we are only really scratching the surface. In fact, my, my organic chemistry textbook from university was this thick, and that was just organic chemistry. So what, ooh, Oh, look at this. It's doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things, and I didn't do anything. See, I promise it's you. It's not the board. It's you this time. I didn't time. even touch the board I this saw time. You. I saw you. Yeah, no, it was all me. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to blame John because he was on before me. Anyway, sorry, John. So what are we going to do? We're going to look at the different organic compounds. We're going to look at how to name and identify them. And then we're going to define some important terms because the terminology is probably going to get you more than anything else. So let's go through that. And I have to be honest, I think those of you who've been watching the show for a while realize English isn't always my strong suit and it's my home language. And now there's even worse words. In fact, my kids were laughing at me today, but let's not go there. Okay. So, first of all, let's get the challenge question out the way. And AB, it's not a multiple choice question, sweetie. Just so you know. But the test yourself questions are. No, the test yourself are. Mm -hmm. Unlike the grade 11 question. <laughs> it's all about reading. So <laughs> consider the following compound. And what we have over here is we have this. We have an H, an H, a carbon, a couple of carbons in there. It's in a nice ring structure. There's a couple of double bonds. And the challenge is I want you to give the name of the compound using the IUPAC rules. Okay, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. They're the ones, it's a, an association that then sits down and says, this is how we're going to name. So across the world, no matter where you go, they use the same rules. Okay, it's not something we've made up, and it's not something that South Africa's made up and gone, this is what we want. This is an international system. So I want you to consider this. Okay, so that's my challenge to you today, is name that compound. Okay, so hopefully by the time we're finished... And I have been a bit mean with this one, but hopefully you'll be able to do that. So, let's start straight away. Lots of little things. First of all, organic, organic molecules are compounds that contain carbon. There are a couple of exceptions. Your exceptions are 
carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, anything with a carbonate in and anything with cyanide in, CN. Those are considered inorganic because of the way the carbon bonds. Organic, this is a little bit of a history for you. Organic chemistry used to be considered just the chemistry of molecules and compounds produced by living organisms, humans, animals, plants, that sort of thing. Until a scientist came along, and I think it was the late 1800s, and he produced urea, which is the compound you produce when you go to the toilet, okay? All those things you talk about, exactly what it sounds like, <laughs> urea, okay? But he made the, the urea compound, they knew what it looked like, from two, organ two inorganic compounds. So this put the science community on their head and they went, okay, we need to redefine what organic chemistry is. So it's the study of carbon-based compounds, which means every single organic compound has carbon in it, okay? Now, we basically are gonna consider hydrocarbons, which are then exactly what they say, hydrocarbons, compounds with hydrogen and carbon in. We also have a couple of homologous, homologous, see, I hate these words, I'm mm. just saying. I'm really not good at them. And my children, ooh, look, pen. Homologous. That word, there we go. That word, series of compounds, <laughs> okay? Basically, they're the family, okay? They are defined by having the same functional group and the same general formula, but every next member of the functional group has an extra CH2 group attached, okay? Now your functional group is what defines the, the compound. The functional group, and it's the next part that I've got here for you, is an atom, a group of atoms, or a group of atoms that determines the characteristic properties of that compound. It determines boiling point, melting point, all those physical things, determines what type of chemical reactions it goes over, determines if it smells, determines if it doesn't smell, determines what it can be used for. So that functional group determines its function. It's an easy way to remember it, okay? And the nice thing is we've actually reduced this down to only about seven or eight that you need to know. And the first three are the easiest because they're the basic ones. So the first one is your alkanes, which I know you can't really see properly, but the important part here is that it ends in the term A-N-E, alkanes, all right? And it's defined by the fact that there's a single bond between two carbon atoms. That's an alkane. Simplest form of a hydrocarbon is simply alkanes. We then get alkenes, which end in E-N-E, -E, okay? And they must have a double bond between two carbon atoms. Be careful, don't just say they must have a double bond because you're gonna see just now we have ones where there's a double bond with oxygen, okay, which are not alkenes. Alkenes must have a double bond to two carbon atoms. There only has to be one for it to turn into an alkene. Then we get our alkynes. Alkynes have a triple bond, okay? And guys, all we're doing today is we're looking at the molecules. We're not looking at properties, we're not looking at boiling points. Some of you might have started that already, so just stay with, we're gonna go through the naming rather, okay? So the, the triple bonds. Then we get the alkyl halides or haloalkanes, okay? They're defined by the fact that they have a halogen attached. Now I haven't put anything in the last column to say what their name ends in, because actually their name starts with something else, which we'll do in a second, okay? Then we get the alcohols, okay? The alcohols are defined by the OH. Please be careful here. This is not an anhydroxide atom like you get in, say, sodium hydroxide. This is called a hydroxyl. Be careful as well. If you go and Google alcohols on the net, okay, or you go and look at all the textbooks, a lot of them are write the OH like that, okay, because they come together but you are required to show every covalent bond, okay? So when we draw a structure, which is what this is, this is a structural formulae, you must draw the covalent bond. So you must show the bond between the O and the H, and it ends in O-L. This is where your handwriting becomes really, really important because the next one on our list are aldehydes, okay? Defined by the fact that we have a double bond to an oxygen, but that oxygen must sit on either the very first carbon or the very last carbon. It's called a terminal carb, um, functional group. Okay? It's got to be on an end, can't be in the middle. But aldehydes end 
N A L. So when you have to name them, I must be able to tell the difference between your O's and your A's. Otherwise, they're going to look like they spelt the same between an alcohol and an aldehyde. Then we get our ketones. Ketones are very similar to aldehydes. They also have a double bond to an oxygen. The difference is that that oxygen must sit in the middle. It cannot sit on the ends. Okay, so aldehydes, the oxygen sits on the end. Ketones, the oxygen sits in the middle. And it ends in O, not one. It's pronounced own. Okay? And the last two, carboxylic acids. We, you've seen carboxylic acids before. You've probably worked with them. It ends with a double bond oxygen and an OH, and it's oic acid. We're going to get to those in a second. And then esters, which you're going to deal a lot with. Your prescribed practical is to actually create an ester. I think you'll love doing that. has a double bond to an oxygen and a single bond to an oxygen in the middle. And that name is a little bit more complicated, okay, which we'll get to. It's named from the alcohol and the acid that creates it. You must know these. Okay, you must be able to identify this, the functional groups. Now, when we name organic compounds, there's always a prefix, a root, and a suffix. Three parts to it, okay? Because we've got to name everything. It's given an address, essentially. So the prefix, the beginning, tells me how many repeated groups we have. If there's no repeated groups, then we don't put anything in the prefix, okay? But the prefix is di, tri, or tetra you will not get more than four repeated groups, okay? So don't worry about above four, you will not get more than four. Then it comes to the number of carbon atoms. Now this is the number of carbon atoms in what we call the longest chain, the longest continuous chain that I can draw with my pencil from beginning to end of a group of carbons, okay? Running from one to eight. Meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, okay? Now what I suggest you do, grade 12s, is you learn this, and then when you get into a test and an exam, on your exam paper, on the question paper, quickly write all of these down. So make a list. Go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then write down the, pref the, the prefix for the root, okay? Because then you don't have to think about it when you're naming. Then you can just go, oh, wait, this has got four carbons. You look it up and you go, it's but. We're happy. Then you go to the end, the suffix. Now, the suffix is what we were doing on the last table with, so if there's only straight, if there's only single bonds between the carbons, then it ends in ane. So it can be something like ethane or propane or butane. So then we have to look at the functional group, okay? Uh, no, let's not go there yet. Then, and from here as well, we've got to do one other thing. We've got to give each functional group an address. This is how I describe it to my friends, to, to my kids, sorry. They're, not, they're so not my friends. <laughs> they're my kids. <laughs> sure, hope they're not listening. <laughs> this is, I'm not going to live that down in the morning. Moving on. So this is how I describe it. You say to your friends, please come visit me. And they go, okay, cool, where do you live? I live on Smith Street. Cool. That doesn't help much, does it? Because I know you live on Smith Street, but how do I find your house? I need to know what number in Smith Street because then I know where your house is and I can come straight to you. It's the same with functional groups. We have to give them a number. We have to tell you where they live on the route. Okay, important terms, just quickly. Hydrocarbon. So these are your definitions. Okay, a hydrocarbon is a compound containing only carbon and hydrogen. A saturated hydrocarbon is a hydrocarbon where there are only single bonds between the carbon atoms. Okay, only single bonds between the carbon atoms. Unsaturated means that there's an organic compound that contains a double or a triple bond between two carbon atoms, or more than one double or triple bond. There doesn't have to just be one, but it, there has to be at least one. Note though, I'm saying between two carbon atoms, it's not the same when there's a double bond with an oxygen. Okay, and lastly, isomers. Isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula, but different structural formulae. So if I write it out, if I write it as C2H6, for example, it can look one way, but when I draw it, it can have two different names. C2 is better. I say C3, C3H8 is a better one. Okay, that's propane, because we can do a whole bunch of stuff with that. So we can 
draw it differently, give it two different names or three different names or four different names, but if we just wrote the molecular formula, it would look the same regardless. Okay, but it's an isomer. When we look at isomers, isomers have different structures, so they have different properties. Okay, and I think, A.B., now mm -hmm. that I've overloaded the brains, mm -hmm. we need a little bit of a break, and then we'll jump into some questions. So true. Mindset plus physical sciences plus Tracy, what do you get? An overload? It's a pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well I like it. Well, okay. Most of them okay. Do stay tuned. We'll see you after this break. <laughs> Welcome back, my sister is uh, Tracy. Please don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help it. He starts giggling when I look at him. <laughs> Please don't do this, Tracy. Okay, I won't. I'll, I'll keep quiet. Welcome now. back, my sisters. Keep your questions coming on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Now, I have this question. I hope you're going to giggle after this question. Okay, I'm listening. Actually, it's a comment okay. uh, from Gaps Lovable. Gaps Lovable. <laughs> okay. Lovable Mguni. Yes. Please highlight Tracy for me. She's the wind beneath <laughs> my wings. <laughs> When it comes to physics, oh, I love this section. Oh, you're so sweet. I Thank wish my kids thought that. Thank you, so your friends. Thank you so much, <laughs> my sisters. <laughs> Remember to take your test yourself questions and send us the right answers on the link that is provided on Facebook. And do the test yourself questions. Already, there's so many answers. I saw that. Mm. We had a quick look. And wow, I actually think, I don't think they really need me. It looks like some of them actually have got this section. Right. We'll see. Yeah, maybe the change question wasn't so hard. Mm. But, you know, it's okay. We've got to start somewhere. But <laughs> thanks, guys. I, I always like the comments. It's just, you know, my, uh, my grade 11 learners today don't like me that much, I can tell you. But that's the case. What happens when they get moaned? I wonder. No, they got moaned, Dad. It's fine. <laughs> They'll get over it. Okay. Now, what we're going to do with question one today is we're going to draw structural formulae. Draw, if you can draw the structure, then naming becomes a lot easier. Okay? So you're going to get a couple of these. This isn't really what you're going to see in an exam, but this is where we're going to start. And then question two that we're going to do now will be a more of an exam type question, okay? So they ask you to draw the structure of heptane, okay? It's heptane. So the first thing we go is we recognize and we say, fine, hept means seven. So that means it's seven carbons, but it's ane, seven carbons with only single bonds between them. Okay, so that means I've got to draw seven, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, but that is not the structure. Please be careful here. Sometimes we try and get a bit lazy, and we go, well, each of these carbon atoms have to have four bonds, so we know all of these are going to have a little hydrogen, and then sometimes... We get lazy again, and we say, there we go, that's my structure, and you won't get any marks for this because you have to draw in every single hydrogen. Every single one. Okay, don't get lazy. Also, please, grade 12s, you've got to consider that your, your markers, some of us are getting old now, so we need help when it comes to reading your handwriting. And sometimes when you draw these, you draw these so tiny that actually we can't tell the difference between the bond and the hydrogen. And when you're tired because you've been marking for 11 hours a day for four days, things get missed. And you don't want that, okay? Or you're struggling to see. You want to make it as easy as possible. So don't make it as small as possible. Obviously, don't make it the whole page. But make it big enough to read nicely, okay? Then, 2-butene, which can also be written and this is more the way you're probably going to get it in your exams, is it's written as but to in. Okay, now this is quite important because butene has got four carbons. But, four carbons in the longest chain, okay? So we're going to write four. One, two, three, four. Now they're saying to me that it's but to in. The in means there's a double bond. That double bond can sit in a couple of places on the between the first and the second carbon or the second and the third carbon. So we're going to go, okay, well, I need to know where it sits, which is what the two is for. So the two tells me that my double bond sits on my second and third carbon. So the two is the number of the first carbon it sits on. So it's between carbon two and carbon three. 
Now we need to fill up with hydrogens. First one's easy because this will become one, two, three. Now we get all excited because we know we need to fill up with hydrogens, but we forget as special as carbon is, it can only make four bonds. So we look at this and we go, well, that carbon already has one, two, three bonds. That means I can only add one more hydrogen. Remember last year you did Vespa, you did molecules, you did shapes, you realized that atoms like to be as far away as possible. So we really should draw the hydrogen on that carbon at the bottom, okay, because they want to be as far away from each other as possible. It's like you trying to share a room with your sibling, okay. You all know how, how well that goes sometimes. And hydrogen's at the end, so that one was fairly straightforward. Okay, then 2-methyl pro Wow, now it's starting to get a little, okay. Well, there's several things here. We've got two methyl, so the methyl sits together. Then we have prop, and then we have in, okay? The methyl is a branch. It's attachment. It's like the garden cottage in the house, okay? It's an attachment to this. The propene is my longest chain. Prop means three, so that means I'm going to have three carbons, one, two, three. Now I've got an ene. Ene means a double bond, and I'm pretty sure some of you are going, but Tracy, they didn't tell me where that double bond can be. That's because there is only one place it can be, which is here, okay, or not, which is there. Now before you start screaming at the TV and go, but wait, Tracy, it can also be between the other two, okay? So in other words, you're saying to me that I can do this. Actually, that's just a mirror image of that. The mirror image, is we've just turned it around. It's the same thing, which is why I don't put the numbers in, okay? So be careful there. So let's take that away. But we're not done, because now we need to do the methyl group, and it's on the second carbon, one, two, okay? Let's do it over here. Methyl means meth is one carbon. Methyl or your alkyl groups, which we are branches which we put on top, they look like alkanes, but instead of being a long chain, they, they're just an alkane missing a hydrogen, which we attached to the chain, okay? So methyl means we've got one, there's the one, has three hydrogens, okay? This carbon's going to have three hydrogens. And now we've got to go, let's see about the one in the middle. One carbon, one bond, two bond, three bond. It's already got four bonds. It can't have any more. And one hydrogen and one hydrogen. Now, I draw the hydrogens out to the side, grade 12s, because we want them to try to have as much space away from each other as possible. Okay? Then we've got methanol, A-L, not O-A-O-L, so it's not an alcohol, it's an aldehyde, okay? The most famous aldehyde is formaldehyde, which if you do life sciences, you know when they keep all those like specimens and stuff in jars, it's full of formaldehyde. And in fact, our life sciences have got like a baby pig, I think it is. It's, sorry, oops, I didn't do that. Um, it's about this, I can't, I can't actually go into the biology labs because of it, but uh, I just can't. Shame on you. No, it's a baby pig, man. It's cute. <laughs> it shouldn't be in a jar. That's why I, t I think I'm just going to stick to my subject covers that time. Please. Okay. Meth. Meth means one. Aldehyde means double bond to an oxygen. So there's one hydrogen over there, and there'll be one hydrogen over there. That's methanol. Nice and easy. Ooh, look here. Methyl eth. The no eight. Oh boy, this is an ester. Esters are wonderful things because their names are really easy and the way they're drawn. The methyl, just as quickly, comes from the alcohol that made it, which means this comes from methanol. Okay. And the ethano eight part comes from the acid that we use. It's an alcohol and an acid put together. And this comes from ethano, just pretend that's an H, ethanoic 
sinned. Okay? So, methyl, the first part of this. Methyl means one, so we're going to have a single carbon. Then we have a second part that says ethanoate. That means we have another part that has two carbons. Okay. What joins the two together? An oxygen in the middle. Right here is an oxygen. Okay. But now we've got a, there's one more thing. An ester has a double bond to an oxygen as well. And that double bond oxygen always goes to the part that's from the acid. So it comes over here. And now the rest is just hydrogens. So we have a hydrogen over here. This is a nice colorful molecule. It's beautiful. Okay. And each of these has four. The, what, the carbon, my first carbon with all the oxygens on can't, cannot have any hydrogens. Otherwise, it has too many friends. Okay. Carbon likes friends, but carbon only likes to have four friends at a time. Can't have more than four friends at a time. It gets very, it, it just can't handle it. Okay. So it's four friends at a time. Then the last one that we're going to do on this question is propanol with an O. Okay. One, two, three. But there's a problem with this name. I haven't told you where to put the OH. Because it can go on the first one or the second one. So let's put it on the last one. I really should have named this um, propan one O. O H. Guys, whether you draw that OH coming up, going down, or to the side makes no difference. Okay? It's the same thing. It's just in a different position. So those are all hydrogens. Okay. So we make it nice and neat, which is not what I have right now, but I'm blaming the board. Okay. Naming nice and easy. Okay. Okay, this is adapted from question three from the November 2010 paper, this one. So this is what you're going to get. The chemical properties of organic compounds are determined by their functional groups. The letters A to F in the table below represent six organic compounds. Now, grade 12s, before you even look at the question, I'm not even going to scroll up, look at what they've given you and see if you can name them. See if you can identify what they are. So we look at these and we go, over here, I have a double bond to a carbon, which means this is an alkene. Okay, let's figure out what we know what they are. Okay, this one only has single bonds, but then I have a halogen over here, which means this is a haloalkane. Okay. Over here... C only has single bonds with all of them, which means it's an alkane. Okay, I'm not even worrying about naming them right now. Methanol means it's an aldehyde. We actually just drew it. Okay, so that's an aldehyde. This has a double bond oxygen with an OH at the end, which means it's one of the acids. I'm going to run out of space to put carboxylic acid there. And then they, they name methyl methanoate. It's the only one where we have a double barrel like that, so it's an ester. Okay, now, the reason why I've done that is because in the question over here, it spoke about functional groups. So they're probably going to ask me something about the functional groups along the way. Okay, so I've identified all the functional groups. Okay, we could also go further and now name each of these compounds. I'm not even looking at the question. And as much as you're saying, oh, but Tracy, we're wasting our time, what if they don't ask? That's not the point here, grade 12s. I'm trying to teach you some stuff about how to answering, and you're going to see by the time we actually look at the questions, it's going to be so easy. You, you're going to breeze through the questions because you've spent time interacting with the question. Okay, so let's name these. We have one, two, three, four carbons in the longest chain. Four carbons in the longest chain, it's an alkene. So that makes it butene, butene, but I need to number where the double bond is, and it's on the first carbon. Okay, it's between one and two. I'm going to go, uh, I don't always number from left to right. I'm going to make it get to the smallest address possible. So from left to right, in this case, it's on the first one. So this carbon's name, this compound is butene. Okay. My next one, oh, it's a little more difficult, and I'm going to put it at the top. So we go, let's see, 
one, two, three carbons if I go that way, one, two, three carbons if I go that way, one, two, three carbons if I go that way, but I can't use that as my longest chain because it's got to include the bromine. Okay, it's got to include the bromine. So I'm going to make this part my longest chain. That's three carbons in the longest chain. That makes it propane. Okay, don't have to number anything for the propane part. Attached to the propane is a bromine and a methyl group. We just drew a methyl group, okay? And we go, well, where are they? Well, the bromine is more important than the methyl. So the bromine must go on the smallest. It's got to be first in the street. So that's one bromo, because that's where it lives, one bromo, and the methyl sits on two. So it's one bromo methyl, and you can't read that propene, propane, so let's just pretend you can read it. Now this last one that we're going to do here, one, two, three, four, five, six in the longest chain, that means meth, eth, prop, but, hept, no, no, pent, sorry, pent, hex, hex is six, so I know this is going to be hexane, I'm going to write it over here because I've run out of space, okay, and now we've got a methyl group on that carbon and a methyl group on that carbon. There's two methyl groups, which makes it dimethyl. Okay, all of this becomes one word. So it's dimethylhexane, but I need to say where the methyl groups live. So watch what happens. Now, if I number from left to right, so I go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then my numbers for my methyl group goes on the third carbon and the fifth carbon. And we go, okay, that's an option. But let's see what happens if I go the other way around. So now I go one, two, three, four, five, six. So instead of using three and five, I can use the numbers two and four. So this becomes two, four, dimethylhexane. Okay, you must have it on the smallest numbers. They don't like big numbers. They really don't. And this last one here, I'm not going to worry about drawing the others because I don't have enough space there. That's ethanoic acid. Two carbons in the longest chain. So this is ethanoic acid. Now, I know we've just spent five minutes spending some time looking at what functional groups we have, what series they belong to, what their name is, but that's okay, because now watch what happens when we answer the question. First question, write down the letter that represents the following, an alkene. Oh, wait, hello, we did that already. It is A. Done. Don't even have to think about it. Which one represents the aldehyde? D. We did it right at the beginning. Look at that. Took me 30 seconds. Not even. Okay. Then the next question, write down the I, oh, we've done it already, the IUPAC name of compound B. We already did it. One bromo, two methyl propane. So let's actually write it down nicely so that somebody can actually read it. So it's one bromo, two methyl, look at that, you can actually read my handwriting, propane. Done. I don't even have to think about it. So even though I've just spent five minutes interacting with it, when it comes to writing the question, it's easy as pie because we've done it already. And then, which we just did this last one, number C, 2,4-dimethylhexane. So we're going to write that in here as well. 2, 4, oh, that was terrible. That's even worse. 2, comma, 4, dimethylhexane. Nice and easy. Ooh, write down, we knew this was coming, the structural formula of compound D. Compound D is methanol. We've already done that once today. Methanol, double bond oxygen, done. Write down the name of the carboxylic acid shown in the table. Where was the acid? It was E. We've already done that. We just need to write it in. Don't even have to think about it. So that was ethanoic acid. And then the last question here is write down the structure for the formula of F. 
which is methyl methanoate. We like that one because it's actually the easiest out of all the esters. Methyl, one carbon. Methanoate, one carbon. Double bond oxygen, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Really not so bad. Okay, so I'm hoping that helped. We need to take a short break and then we'll answer some questions. Thank you so much, but happy birthday to Bonnie Celia Bonnie, who says, Mindset and Extra rocks. Happy birthday to myself. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> Please study hard. Thank you so much. Well, I hope this gives you a happy birthday because you're learning some new stuff. It's always important to learn as you get older. Let us know on the page. Otherwise, Mindset is, we've got so much in store. We've got so much in store for you after the break. Challenge question and answering your questions. So don't move. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Now, you still have an opportunity to do the test yourself questions up until 10 o'clock today. So after the show, you can still do the test yourself questions, submit them on the link that is provided on Facebook, and you could stand that chance of winning an awesome airtime voucher proudly sponsored by Vodacom. But for now... Oh, good. It's, it's my turn. Okay. Yes. Let's look at the challenge question, which I think might not have been too much of a challenge, actually. Okay. Challenge question is actually quite nice and I deliberately didn't put anything in the notes on it because it's a ring structure, okay? Whenever something is in a ring form, it means that somewhere in the name you have to have the word cyclo, okay? And in fact, the name's going to start with cyclo because it's a cyclo. Cyclo means a ring, okay? Some of you on the page said it's benzene. It's not benzene. Benzene's actually been taken out. You don't have to worry about the aromatics anymore as such. Okay. Benzene is only, it has got six in, the, in, the, in its ring, which is great, which is the same as benzene. But benzene has to have three double bonds in it. This doesn't. This only has two double bonds. Okay. So we go, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know it's got six carbons in its ring. So this is going to be a cyclohex. Okay, hex meaning six, okay? And there's a little thing we put in here. Because it's not, because we've got two double bonds, we have to call it a diene. Instead of putting the di in the front, we put it in the middle, okay? So we actually call this a hexa. It's a naming thing, all right? So I'm going to leave where the numbering would go, and this would be diene, and I'm writing over my compound, but that's okay. So, so far, we're not doing too badly, but now we go, but where do I number it? Because it's a ring. I don't know which carbon was the first one or the last one or the one in the middle. So, you know what? You start by one of the carbons, and you say, my double bond has to go from one to two, okay? I can't have one and then go the other way from it. So, if this is one, two, three, four, okay? Or if I go one, two, three, four, four, or if I go one, two, three, four, or if I go one, two, it's all the same. So actually, this is one, four, diene. So it's cyclohexa, one, four, diene. Some of you on the page wrote one, four, cyclohexa, diene. That's fine, though the examiners are wanting the numbers in the middle. Pretty much what they, what they want is for the numbering to go with the, with the, what it's numbering, okay, with the, with the branch, with the functional group, okay. So if you wrote 1,4-cyclohexadiene, that's fine. Make sure you've got the A in it. If you wrote cyclohexa 1,4-diene, perfect. Well done. I am impressed. Mm. Okay, now we were talking, there's some questions. Yes, and thanks to everybody that took uh, the challenge question. There's over 78 comments, answers that we got. So that's impressive, and I think most of them got it right. So yes, they did. That's brilliant. Well done, guys. Big ups, mindsetters. First question. Yes. How do, I uh, how do I identify alcohol? An alcohol, sweetie, is always identified by the fact that it has to have a single bond to an oxygen, which is then bonded to a hydrogen with nothing else. Okay? An acid... If this was a carboxylic acid, there's the double bond to the oxygen attached. With the alcohol, it's just that. Okay, now we could have, 
One carbon, three carbons, four carbons, five million carbons, it doesn't matter. It's the single bond to the oxygen and the hydrogen and then single bonds around the carbon. Okay, next Th one. Thank you so much. Innocent Chakala, what, what is the 15th term of alkene? Okay, sweetie, if your teacher is making you go to 15, there's a problem. The documents and the, the um, official documents say that you only need to know up to eight. So you only need to know up to octane. Do not go further than that, okay? You will never get more than eight in the longest chain, and you will never get more than four of the same kind of branch on a chain. So please be careful that you do not need to know up to 15. You used to have to know up to 10. We've never had to know up to 15, okay? In fact, I can't even remember offhand what the 15th one is because that was a long time ago. <laughs> Hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Moving right along. Yes. I don't want to ask you when. No, I don't. No, no. Right. Bobo Siawonga. Tracy, you wrote a double bond. If I wrote a double bond on the right in 1.3, will I be wrong? Okay. Let's just quickly go back and see what number three was. So everyone's on the same page. Okay. So 1.3 over here was 2-methylpropene. Okay. So let's go back and I'm going to redraw it. So we've got 2-methylpropene. That was the question. Okay. 2 methyl propene. Okay, now I drew it with the double bond on the first one, so I went, let's do it this way, and that's where it went, and this is not neat, so anyway. So now the question is, if you do it the other way, would you be wrong? And the question, and so let's just have a look, so what we're saying is, if I go here, and I say, fine, here's my propene, Okay, the first very important thing is that the methyl group has to go in the middle. Okay, because it's got to be a number two. But if I drew the double bond over there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Because what you've done is you've actually just drawn the mirror image of the compound. It's just in a mirror. So it's exactly the same compound. So remember just now, I was numbering from right to left and left to right. So this is one, two, and three. Here it's one, two, and three. So you absolutely can draw it on the right. Just by convention, and I think it's more because we read from left to right, if you ask to draw a compound, rather number from left to right. Make number one on the left-hand side if you can. Just because that's our natural reading way. Okay, we don't... Um, we, we, not, we don't write, read from right to left. I know some countries do and some nations do, and that's great. Okay, and they'll probably number from right to left in the first place. We read from left to right. So, so number it as you, as you read, if you have an option. Okay, awesome. next one. Awesome. Uh, Tokyo, is it possible for a branch to form one on, on the first carbon of a compound? Okay, now that's an interesting question because it depends on what we're defining as a branch, okay? So, for example, if I drew this, and I said, here you go, okay, just put, we're not going to put in all the hydrogens. This is not a branch on the last carbon, because if you go and you tell me that that is my longest chain, you're actually incorrect. Hydrocarbons, if we actually have to draw them, we draw them as straight chains, but in fact, the bonds rotate on themselves. And the longer the chain becomes, the more they actually bend and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So the way we identify our longest chain is we take our pencil and we start at one carbon and I go all the way across and I can draw a straight line without jumping over hydrogens or empty spaces. So this cannot be a branch at the end. But if I'm doing a hello alkane, for example, absolutely the halogen can sit at the end. And this is almost like a branch. But I can't have a methyl group or an ethyl group or anything like that sitting on the last carbon of the chain because it just means that the chain is bent. So be careful with those ones because that's an easy place for you to get caught out. So if your examiner is being particularly mean, they'll draw your longest chain bent and you need to recognize that that's actually butane, not a version of propane. Okay, so just be careful there. So the answer to that question is no, if it's a methyl or an ethyl or an alkyl group, but yes, if it's a halogen or an alcohol or something like that. Okay, yes. Okay, here's another one. 
from Jonah. Mm -hmm. How do you determine what type of a bond it is? Is there a table given or it's just one of those things that you just need to memorize? Okay. Wow. It's one of those things you have to memorize. So the ninth, if we go and look back at the notes, which you really should download for this one, is over here on this page. There's this list, okay, which I gave you with the table. You need to learn this. As much as I wish they would give you a part of this in the information sheet, they don't. In fact, chemistry, unlike physics, they give you very little on your information sheet. So don't bank on it. If you're worried you're going to forget, because that happens, okay, you get into the exam and you get to the organic and now you're stressed and now you forget. What you need to do is find a system to help you remember. So you go into your exam, and the first thing you do, besides the method F and all the rest of it that you need to write down, is you make yourself a little list as you go like that. That's an alkane, and that's an alkene, and this is an, al this is an alkyne. And so you write a little list, okay? At home, you need to have made this list for yourself at some stage, Okay, because if you write it, you learn it. Okay, so make a list, make it colorful, whatever you need to do. And then on your question paper, not on the answer sheet, because then it's gonna someone's going to try and mark and it's going to become a bit of a disaster. Okay, on your question paper, write this list somewhere. Spend five minutes at the beginning of your exam getting this information out your head. Because then you're not spending 20 minutes every time you get to a question going, going through your list, because then you've got your list and you can just refer to it. So it's a way of you making your own data sheet as you walk into the exam. And everyone is different with this, okay? I had a learner a few couple of years ago who always forgot to put units for a long time. And then I told them, first thing you do when you walk into the exam, on the front of your answer, on your question papers, you write in big units with whatever, and he did that every single time afterwards, and he got an A at the end of my trick, because he remembered to write units. He was losing 10% every time he forgot to put a unit. Okay, now he remembered, but, but he didn't have to think about it anymore. In fact, by the time he finished, he didn't have to have to write the note, but it became habit. This must become habit. Okay, not gonna be given it, must learn it. Okay. Awesome, great work. Uh, Priska, if you may, please, uh, may you explain the, con explain the condensed structural formula? Okay, I didn't actually go into that. So if we look at a propene, propane, okay? When I draw it like this, this is the structural formula, okay? Structural formula means I write out all the bonds. Condensed structural formula means is I write it almost like a molecular formula, but I don't show the bonds. So now I go, this is a carbon with three hydrogens. Then I have another carbon with two hydrogens. Then I have another carbon with three hydrogens. Okay? So instead of showing all the bonds, I condense it. However... If I've got something like, say, butene, let's make it butene, okay, which would, there's all my hydrogens. Now I need to write this condensed structural formula. I start, I've got a CH3, then I've got a single carbon to a hydrogen, okay, but now I've got to be careful because if I do a double bond here, we've got a bit of a problem, but we can. We have a double bond carbon. CH3. But does that look right to any of you? I'm hoping you say no, because it's not. Okay, because that's not where the double bond sits. CH3, then we have a hydrogen and a carbon and a double bond and a hydrogen and a carbon. So you show double, triple bonds, but you don't show any of the others. If you have a branch, so now we're looking at, say, this, so now we have, let's make this butane. Okay, so we've got two methyl, this is two methyl butane. You've got two ways of drawing this one. Okay, you've got the CH3. Then you have the CH, and you can put the branch 
in a bracket, okay, CH2, CH3, or if you want to, and it's a choice thing, okay, you can go CH3, CH, here, CH3, CH2, CH3, okay? This way of writing condensed forms become very popular, okay? They like to do that, okay? Be careful when I ask you to draw a structure, you may never do that. Please don't do that. I know it feels a bit like a shortcut. Don't do it, okay? So a condensed structure still shows each individual carbon with all the hydrogens attached, but without all the bonds, basically. Okay. okay. Right. Here's another one. Uh, Maboko, adding on what Tokyo asked earlier on, uh, let me remind you the question. Mm -hmm. Tokyo asked, is it possible for a branch to form on the and first carbon yeah. of the compound? Um, and then uh, what if we have another methyl group at the end? Will, will, will it be our longest chain? Yes, the methyl becomes part of it, okay? You cannot have a methyl group as a branch on the last carbon. Okay, even if it's an alcohol, so even if we do this, okay, so, so over here I make this an alcohol, and now I put the CH3 over here. It's very tempting to say my longest chain is this part, is from here to here, but it's not, okay, because your longest chain, is, it doesn't matter about the OH, it really doesn't. The longest chain has to be about the carbons. That's my longest chain. So that actually changes the position of the OH. Okay, so what I'm saying to you is that you can't have a methyl or an ethyl or any of those on the last carbon. It actually just bends the chain. Okay. Right, here's yes. another one. Um, starting with a great, a sweet comment. <laughs> I usually watch Learn Extra and Learn, but sometimes it's hard to understand. But today, uh, what a blessed day. I understand and enjoy, s enjoying so much, so Aww. loving you. Keep doing your marvelous work. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, sweetie. And the question goes, how do I identify cyclo? A cyclo is a ring. Okay, so as soon as this, so I can turn this into a ring, heaven forbid with an alcohol, they won't do that, if I do this. Say, now the carbon's, uh, I'm trying to rub it out like I do it in my classroom, which is just silly, because that's not a whiteboard. Anyway, so now the carbon's added together. This is a ring, I know it doesn't look like a circle, but if I now take this, let's, let's actually do it with a, with a highlighter and do there. No, not going to happen. Unfortunately, so Tracy, we are I have to say goodbye. I'm it's got to be a ring. Sorry. That's like a bye. My sisters, thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And sorry, we don't have time. Keep your questions coming on the help desk at mindset.co.za. For me, to you, peace.